Well, good afternoon, everybody. I, um, let's make sure we got the right live mic. We do. Been a while since we've done this, and uh, I've had a few requests to come back and and go through some things, and we'll we'll try to keep this in some sort of a cadence as we go through 2022. And uh, I did have a guest uh, assigned uh, today. Unfortunately, uh, he wasn't able to make it. Uh, it was um, it was actually you know a not feeling well issue. So we're uh, sort of something we're uh, common, pretty common for what's going on. That being said, I uh, I just thought we'd start all over. There's a lot of things we haven't done. We have a lot of new uh, users that have never seen our Facebook Live. And uh, I see by the questions in the community, there are some things we can certainly talk about and uh, and go through. But I wanted to go through a couple things coming up. First, in a couple of weeks, we got Hamcation going on in Orlando. And uh, we have... Um, Every in time, just watching the data come in, every intention of being there. So uh, we'll have a full staff. We've got two speaking spots. Both uh, Gerald Youngblood, our CEO, is speaking at the uh, Duringhamvention. And we have uh, Steve Hicks. Uh, hi, Silva. Our CTO will be speaking. And uh, hi, Ben. Thanks for – look at this DX we have coming in today. Two countries already. Uh, speaking, uh, Gerald's got a really interesting talk. I've seen portions of it before. Uh, and he's going to talk why an SDR radio is actually happier with the more signals it hears. And uh, which sort of sounds counterintuitive, but it's actually quite true. And uh, so that's uh, that's pretty slick. Uh, I'm not sure what Steve's talking about yet. But we will also, uh, and, and Gerald's talk, that's for QSO Today, rather. Um, Gerald and Steve will be talking at QSO Today. Steve and Dan Quigley will be talking at uh, the at Hamvention in a couple of weeks. Hi, Howard. And uh, I still might be going. <laughs> it's like been on and off again. It's due to some scheduling. So it uh, be nice to get down into the warmth. Yes, I'm wearing this hat for a reason. It's actually cold out here in... Uh, Kanakistan, as my friend Vince says from Ham Radio Workbench. And in case you don't know, I'm located in Toronto. And uh, so uh, that's why the big hat. So we've got Hamcation coming up in a couple of weeks. Uh, if you're going, great. Uh, we will be masked uh, and everything. I did joke about wearing a full hazmat suit, but that didn't go over very well. And then we get to QSO today. We've got some really interesting talks going on. So Gerald, like I said, will be talking about... Uh, Smart SDR, or sorry, SDR receiver overload. And as I mentioned before, why a, an SDR receiver is happier the more signals it gets. Uh, we've got uh, Anna from our engineering team. She'll be talking about the API and the programming interface and some things you can do with it if you're a programmer type or even playing in Node-RED, you're a partial programmer or whatever. whatever. And uh, she told me to say that we actually do eat our own dog food. And if you work in the so software industry, you'll understand what I mean. And that means you use your own software to do your own thing. So we use the same um, connection tools to connect to the radio. Uh, Chris Tate, uh, who is a contest chair for an RTTY contest, and he's going to shoot me for not remembering uh, which contest it is. I've asked him to talk about uh, RTTY and getting started and uh why um, and, and what you have to do if you want to try an RTTY contest. So I'm going to keep it really simple. Uh, Kevin, that's up to the organizers. I don't know if they're going to record the the presentations in Hamcation or not. And look at all the DX we get today. Thanks, for, thanks Rhea, for keeping me honest. Uh, I'm going to do a talk on transverters uh, with the Flex Radio. I have a couple here, but I also... Uh, got a brand new five band transverter from uh, q5 signals and how it beautifully integrates to a flex radio and i'm also going to try running two transverters on the same spectral capture unit and um there'll be more to come uh, i want to share with you something i actually learned this week and uh for people who have been around and understand uh the radios you probably already knew this i probably missed it but uh, as you know, our radios come with one spectral capture unit, or they come with two. 
And a spectral capture unit is the part that gets all the radio signals, captures them, and turns them all into numbers so we can do something with in software. And the uh, so the 6300, 6400, 6500 have one, and the 66 and 67 have two. Each one of these spectral capture units listen to the entire radio spectrum from 30 kilohertz to 54 megahertz at the same time. It looks at that entire spectrum 100% of the time. So this is why you can receive on 160 and 6 meters at the same time or AM broadcast or whatever. So I used to think that um, the on the back of the radio, if you had a 66 or 67, that uh, antenna 1, transmitter A, and RXA are all related. And they were all on the same spectral capture unit. And antenna 2, this is for the two spectral capture unit radios. On antenna 2, antenna 2, transverter B, and RXB were all related. Well, I was doing some testing and Tim set me straight that that is mostly true. Except that antenna 1 and antenna 2, those are generally the HF antennas we use, are switchable and they can actually be used with either spectral capture unit. Now fortunately you don't have to worry about that at all but that does mean you could be using um, well, the setup I was doing was a transverter test where I had a two meter transverter on uh, transverter A and I had an HF antenna on antenna one and it blew my mind that they both worked at the same time. Well it didn't blow my mind but then I had to make some phone calls and understand why so a bit more uh, of what goes on under the covers so so that's uh, so that's where you know one of the cool things that goes on. Um, John's got a question here, and I said I would take some technical questions, and I will, John. And I'll just wait till the end. But I also now wanted to get through some of the things if you're new to Flex Radio and where to find some information. And any probably most of you people watching right away could could do this part of the discussion. But of course, you know we we do have a website and uh, at flexradio.com. Well, of course, and I'll just get rid of the banner here. So or the so that uh, it's not in the way. Sure, I will. There we go. And, uh, of course, it's www.flexradio.com. And uh, you've probably all found the products, but the interesting thing here is the software area, and this is where you can find all the downloads. And if we go to um, all software downloads, it eventually takes you to a web page called um, flexradio.com slash software. And if you're not aware, there is a, um, a search area over here. Wow, look at all these. Hi, Dave. Um, I know he's just a Facebook user, but sort of recognize that call sign. Uh, you, can, you can pull down here in categories. Like if you wanted to know uh, things about the application programming interface, uh, their version 2 and version 3 are there. Or you wanted to find uh, smart SDR stuff, you can just drop down these. Things. So there's 2.7.6 and 3.2.39, which are our two most current versions of the software. And yes, there is a 3.3 coming. And I guess I didn't ask this. That probably means there's maybe a 2.8 coming. I don't know. Forgot to ask that today in a meeting. But uh, we are working on a 3.3, so that'll be good to know. And uh, so this tool here is pretty powerful uh, for finding software. And, uh, and what's available. But the other cool thing, too, under support, uh, and there's documentation, uh, again, similar search, but again, under support, if you go to Help Desk, you're probably blown by this screen, but there is a whole bunch of articles on how to do certain things. So if you're having a problem with, uh, and these are some of my things that I haven't tested, We'll say FT8. I can type in FT8. There's a, you know, how getting started with FT8 um, type of thing that Tim wrote uh, recently and uh, in videos. So, or you can search on uh, WSJT. What's that give us? A few more. So these, if they make, if an article makes it to here, then we've taken the time to vet it and format it and uh, into something that's probably pretty easy to read. And so if you click on one of them, you'll get uh, such an article. Hey, wow, this one's written by Steve N5AC. And uh, and so uh, 
Steve's very good at writing stuff. So I don't know if you're familiar with the white paper area. Uh, here, you know, how about uh, you know you can go to Smart Link, and we get a bunch of Smart Links. And um, one other question. This one popped up because Smart Link's part of it. Ever sell your radio, or if you get a new radio? Uh, or you bought a used radio from somebody, you'll really want to run through this. Very common question where uh, I either sold my radio and I forgot to log it out of SmartLink, or I received a radio from somebody, and every time I power it up, the original user says, hey, I don't, you know, what's going on? Uh, so that describes that here. Uh, the easy fix for you if you received a radio and the previous owner forgot to log it out of SmartLink is to uh, just create your own smart link account and that will overwrite uh, things so uh, so there you go the other really powerful area of course is the um, is the help desk uh, we'll go back to uh, well, we'll go into the community next and uh, if you can't find the help desk you can just type in help desk or uh, sign in here and uh, create yourself an account and open a help desk ticket it's in there you can search for how to open a help desk ticket and if you have any problem that you can just email us at info at flexradio.com should you have a password issue uh, sometimes we've seen the password resets take a number of hours so it's something we're aware of okay the community the community is at community.flexradio.com and uh, I think um, you know if you've watched me enough on um, on uh, Facebook, you'll notice that I've been really complaining about go ask your question on the community or if you've got an idea. And we've had some great ideas. I really want them documented in the community because it's easier to find stuff. Items in Facebook don't last very long. And if you watch any other forum, you know, we have almost 5,000 members. And if it gets busy... It's hard to search. It's hard to find something. I have posted stuff where I can't find uh, type of thing. So Facebook is good for a quick answer question, but I will probably ask you to punt it over to the community so that you can have a meaningful dialogue and that others can learn for it because it's about sharing information. So we really want, you know, hey, if you've got a problem finding a noise problem, I guarantee there's other people trying to find it. Um, and, and John had a quick question here about uh, WSJT, as I said, which we'll get back to. So we probably do have that answer in the community, but we're going to teach you about how to diagnose your problem. We may not tell you, you, if you've watched me for the last four years, I'm really good at saying, look here, here, and here, because I actually want you to learn about what might be wrong. And if we don't give you enough information, feel free to ask. If you don't understand a term or something, ask and we got a bunch of guys that are happy to clarify it. And I lost it in another ham radio group when I asked a question regarding a a particular part of amateur radio I wasn't aware about. Hey, I said, can you explain this? And some guy got back to me and said, yeah, you're probably in the wrong group if you don't understand that. And I went, well, you're probably right. So I left. Uh, so keep that in mind. We'll uh, obviously uh, want to help you out. But in the community on the, on the right-hand side here, and I'll see if I can make this bigger is this the hot one nope we'll click here and we'll make this a bit bigger um on the um, right hand side we do have these categories so if you are looking for something or you're or you're going to open something or post something try to pick the right category you know if you're having a smart link issue you can go here's the whole thing on remote operation with smart link and uh, you'll see a bunch of items. I had a question the other day uh, on um, Elon Musk and Starlink. Would it Starlink? Whether it would work? Is that right? Read on my right. I'm, we have so many links, and um, I did a study on or a test where I actually was able to have a smart link set up with something called carrier grade NAT. Did it work? Yes. Would I use it? No. It was incredibly lethargic. And it was delays of almost six or seven hundred milliseconds, so uh, sort of things like that. So you know we have smart SDR for Windows, iOS. If you have CAT or DAX things that are specific, or you're uh, you're working on some station integration, 
So if you're into trying to hook up other stuff uh, to your station, we, we have all that information in here. Uh, this is, uh, you know, what I'm going to be working on on the Q5 uh, multiband transverter uh, type of thing. And, you know, if you're going to order a transverter, what configuration I ordered it in. There's a couple of options, but if you're not sure, this is a safe configuration on any transverter, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So I've also ordered a log periodic antenna for this. So that's coming up. So that's what the community can get you. If you're not a member here and you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, please join it. Uh, we do announcements there. It's a little more structured. It's easy to paste in links. It's easy to paste in uh, images. Um, I spend a lot of time trying to do stuff that's easy to uh, to follow uh, or that you can learn from. And I said, don't hesitate to ask questions. And if I don't give you the answer you want, ask ask again. So John says he's having a trouble uh, FT8 not working. Um so there's a couple of things, John, when you when this happens, and here's his question. Uh, there's a couple of areas you can look at, and no RF is sending out. So the question I have, does the radio still go into transmit? Uh, if yes, okay, that's the first part we need to understand. Uh, so is the audio getting from the um, from WSJT? to the DAX control panel. And you want to look at Smart SDR for DAX, and I probably don't have a copy running. Um, that will show you, you'll see the bar graph moving on the top one for your transmitter. And uh, so that's w one of the places you want to go. Let me see if you bear with me a minute. I might have a dashboard running somewhere. I know I was on it earlier. No, I don't have anything up without starting it. So uh, that's the first place I'd look. So if you've got audio coming out of WSJT, there's a bar graph. Look for that. If you've got audio uh, going through DAX, there's a bar graph. Look for that. Is there other things connected to the radio, other programs? Because we can control multiple programs. To make sure the radio is still in the same mode. Uh, of uh, digi digiu and then also make sure that dax is uh, on in the control panel and uh, i guess i can bring me back up and i'll i'll pull this back up really quickly let me get smart sdr running and i'll show you uh, type of thing and uh, and those are good places to look uh, and i'm logged into the wrong uh, account so i'll log into my my other radio. I'm just going to share a screen here. So this is going to be like dead air, right? This is the worst thing you can do. And I'm going to share a new screen, so I actually have to set this up. So it takes a second. Share screen, and we're going to share this entire screen. Okay, so. This is a, it won't make this bigger, and you can't click on it in the broadcaster. So I'll make that bigger, we'll get rid of you, and we'll get rid of this banner so you can see the whole thing. And then we need DAX to get started, and we'll connect DAX to the 6600M. So here in, um, the DAX right here, if you're transmitting, you will get a audio stream here. If you don't see that, I would stop and restart DAX. Um, I then also would look and make sure that when you're transmitting that this level meter up here shows uh, audio there. And uh, if you don't, look and make sure that right here it says this DAX is lit and it's blue. And what this means is that we're, we've connected the audio path from WSJT through here, through this DAC switch, and into the radio. Uh, beyond that, if you've checked all that and still have a problem, then feel free to um, open a ticket or uh, post something in the community and throw in some screenshots. This exact screenshot is incredibly helpful to us uh, to understand uh, what's really, uh, what's going on. So uh, that's the first place I would look. I don't know if John, if John, if you're still here, you might want to 
comment on uh, on such. All right. Any more questions? And while you guys are thinking, uh, if you're thinking of a PGXL, um, JP asked me to post that for you today. So he's got a big sale on. And these are ready to ship. We actually have them in stock. Uh, ready to go. So that's all I have. By the way, I think uh, Gary uh, V3DZP, I think it was you, Gary, right? that had some cool uh, Mac integration stuff that we posted in the community. Um, and by the way, our community people, if you ask a question there, the ones that are incredibly knowledgeable that you can trust their comments are, are tagged as an Elmer. And uh, they're very thorough. And if they say something, they've got a very logical thought and understand how things work under the cover. So, so that being it today, Unless there's any more questions, we will be happy to hear from you online. You can always uh, uh, call JP if you want to take advantage of that banner uh, that just had the deal on the on the PGXL, and um, and da, 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 oh, we do have some stuff. Hi, Mike. Uh, John, I've seen the same problem. Try checking on Tune and WSJT. Tune is a great tool. If you hit Tune on WSJT, uh, everything should just go and you should have some carrier out. Uh, that gets the audio going all the way through. Tom, no mouse pads yet. Um, wow, I don't think we've printed mouse pads in a long time. And, uh, and uh, that's it. So you guys have a great day. 160 meter contest this weekend for those that can get on the air. And uh, I'm going to try to get on. Um, my antenna on 160 has gone a little short because of the ground freezing. It'll move, in my case, uh, far enough to take the antenna out of resonance. Uh, and I'm not a big tuner fan, in case you hadn't noticed. So uh, I'm running about 2 to 1 right at the bottom of the band. I'll have no problem running the PGXL down there. Uh, I will. And uh, uh, and I'll try to get on. Depends what other family stuff we have coming on. So good to see you guys again. Thanks for the comments. We'll catch up with you uh, next time, probably a couple or three weeks from now. And I'm always open for topics. You can email uh, us at info at uh, flexradio.com and uh, you just go to the website and uh, fill in the form or whatever and we'll glad to hear from you 73 take care it's mike um, vi3mw 73